Stop and think about this for just a moment. I mean, seriously, stop and ponder this. When you finally walked away from your narcissist, what happened was you just lost your worst enemy. Uh, that's a pretty good thing, right? But what about the narcissist? When you walked away from the narcissist, no, seriously, stop and think about this. He or she lost his or her best friend. They lost their best friend. Now, they saw you as supply, right? You were the one, you were the chicken in the coop who ate the most eggs. You provided supply for the narcissist, and now you flew the chicken coop. You're gone, you're out of their lives, and guess what? The narcissist knows they lost you. And, you know, they don't really miss you as a person, as an individual. But what they miss is they miss what you provided for them. So we're asking the question, does the narcissist uh, understand what they had when they uh, were, were abusing you? And the answer is, yeah, that's why they got you in the first place. That's why they held on to you. But they overdid it. You know, sometimes I talk to guys about cars. Guys love to talk about cars and other things, but if you ask a guy, tell me about the best car you ever owned, and then sit back and wait for about an hour while they tell you. And usually it's a sad story because they tell you that they sold the car and they wish they had kept it. Now, you say, that's oh, just a machine, it's just a car, right? Well, to a narcissist, you're just a machine. You're just an inanimate object. But still, they, they miss you with a certain fondness that you were the one that, uh, yeah, they were really proud to dominate you. You were the favorite puppet. Of all their puppets, you were the one who gave them the most supply. That's why they were so near and dear to you, or so it seemed at the very beginning. But they just couldn't help themselves because na uh, just naturally narcissists abuse people. And the more loyal you were to the narcissist, the more the narcissist would abuse you. And eventually, you realize what was going on. So you walked away from the narcissist. You said, I got to get rid of this person. I need this person, this toxic person out of my life. And boom, you're gone. And did you know this? The worst thing you can do to a narcissist, this is point number two. Number one was they lost their best friend. You lost your worst enemy. Good. Number two is the worst thing you can do to a narcissist of all the mean things you could do, tit for tat, pay him back, get revenge and all that, worst thing you could do to a narcissist is just walk away from him because, um, you know, again, I, I hate to keep thinking of people's cars, but from a narcissist, it makes perfect sense because you're not a person, you're not a human being. But you took away his prized possession, you. But the only reason that he wanted you was to take advantage of you, or she wanted to take advantage of you. Now, maybe it was a friend, maybe it was a, a romance, a love relationship, but you took that thing that was near and dear to him away from him. The problem, as you know, is you were near and dear to him or her for all the wrong reasons, so they could take advantage of you, so they could use you. And you know they did, right? Number three is this. Are they sorry? that uh, they abused you and that they lost you? Are they sorry? Yeah, in a sense, they're sorry for themselves. They don't care about you, they never did. Are you sorry that you lost this person? Well, if you are sorry that you lost the narcissist, that's because you're still brainwashed. That's because those seeds of deceit that took root in your brain and grew into, um, what do they call that, kidzu, that plant down south that goes over everything, I can't remember. But it just kind of took over your brain and you had to get rid of that. Well, some of it's still there, right? So if you still think of the narcissist who abused you with a certain fondness, you might want to reconsider why that is. A narcissist, yeah, they're sorry they lost you because they're selfish. If you are sorry you lost a person who was your worst enemy, why would you be sorry about losing your worst enemy? You ought to be happy. You ought to be rejoicing. Do a little happy dance. Yeah, they're out of my life. Narcissists realize that they lost their prized possession, you, and it hurts them immensely. And again, it's all selfish, but it hurts them immensely. So to reiterate what we already said, the worst thing you could do to a narcissist is walk away from them. I mean, that's the best revenge. Number four is this. Your narcissist absolutely positively knew that he had a good thing. Why? Because you treated the narcissist good. You tried to be nice to the narcissist. You tried to help him or her out in their life. You tried to love them or you tried to befriend them, whatever the kind of relationship it was. 
that was a very special thing. And the narcissist is so, so self-absorbed, they didn't understand how great they had it. Well, they do. Sometimes we don't know what we got till it's gone. Sounds like a song, right? Don't know what it's got till it's gone. Don't know what we got till it's gone. Well, guess what? We're gone. Narcissists now, they know what they had. They may come back and try to hoover you. They may try to draw you back in. Sometimes that happens with me. Seldom happens because when I break it off, it's broken off and I make sure they know it. And I, I think that's probably what others should do. I'm not, I don't give advice. I just give people ideas, my opinion. But uh, something you might want to consider, um, just break it off completely. Don't give them any opportunity to get back into your life because they tend to operate on a track and they can't get off the track. It's kind of like a repeat offender. You know, you take this guy who committed some horrendous crime, you put him in jail or prison for years, certainly they have lost their lesson, or learned their lesson, rather. No, you get a, let them out of jail, what do they do? They go right back to the same crime. I mean, like the next day or, or soon after, they don't learn their lesson. It's like it's ingrained in their brain. Well, the narcissist being abusive is ingrained in his brain. So, you know, he lost a good thing, it's gone, he's never going to get it back. The narcissist knows that, and you need to know that he or she knows that. Understand, they know they lost the best thing in their life. You were one of the best things in their life, and they can't have it back. You're not even going to talk to them. You just totally block them. At least that's what I do. You just totally block them out of my life altogether. Number five is this. When you were building that relationship, what was the narcissist doing? Well, he or she was just having a feast, you know. They, they were dining on your gullibility. The fact that you uh, really liked this person, friend, or maybe you loved him if it was a lover, love relationship, you really did. Honestly, truly, genuinely was in love with this uh, individual, but they did not return it. It was not reciprocated. What they saw you as just stupid and gullible, and they sucked it all out of you supply, you know, which was ego boosting is what we're talking about without any thought whatsoever about you. So while you were building the relationship, they were feasting on your gullibility. There's no more feast. I mean, it's gone. Uh, they can't have you anymore. Do they miss that? Of course they miss it. Um, and they're out there looking for someone else just like you, someone else they can take advantage of. But chances are they're not going to find it. Now, there may be some people as gullible, but they've got a lot of looking to do because, you know, a lot of people are gullible, but a lot of them aren't. A lot of them aren't as gullible as maybe we were. So what is the narcissist going to do? Uh, he's going to sit there and say, man, I'll let that one go. But if he had to do it over again, if she had to do it over again, now they probably would have done the exact same thing because it's just part of their nature. It's like they were born to screw people over. They can't help it. But that doesn't diminish the fact that, yeah, they miss you for all the wrong reasons, but truly, they do miss you. Number six is this. When you walked away, you told the narcissist that he or she was not as gifted, as talented, as good as they thought they were. Because if they were as good as they thought they were, you wouldn't have walked away. If they were so talented, so savvy at deceiving people, you would never have found them out. They would have been able to cover their tracks all the time, every time, and you would still be there being their spy, being gullible. But they're obviously not that good at what they do because you found them out. And in my case and other cases that I know about, uh, we're about as gullible as they come. And if gullible people like us can figure out the narcissist, it may take us a little longer than other people. Well, the narcissist can't be that good. And by the way, I don't know any narcissist on the planet who isn't ultimately found out. Maybe that's because they've not been found out. So maybe they're out there somewhere. We just don't know it. But every narcissist that I've dealt with, his living patterns, his thinking patterns, his brain, the way that it works, makes it eventually very obvious. And the older you get, you know, here I am nearly 70 years old, and I've learned a thing or two over these decades. It becomes more and more obvious as those patterns of arrogance and self-centeredness, which they try to hide, you know, behind humility, fake humility, the light just shines through their mask. I mean, you can see, but it's almost as if they're not wearing a mask. And I have learned a, a hard lesson that is just because someone is charismatic and friendly doesn't mean that, that they are friend. It doesn't mean that they're genuine. 
fact, usually it signals just the opposite, not always. I mean, there are some good, decent people out there who are charismatic and they're not narcissists, but I do it backwards. What used to happen was I would give people the benefit of a doubt. Now I give them a doubt to my benefit. Uh, I want them to prove themselves before I commit myself. And what's wrong with that? You know, you try on a pair of shoes, right? Before you buy them, and uh, if you buy something from Amazon.com, what do you do if it doesn't work? Send it back. Buy something at the store, appliance, whatever doesn't work, what do you do? Take it back. With a narcissist, what you do is you don't say, well, I'm just going to assume this is a good person because, well, that's how they present themselves. That's what I used to do. You know, I bought into that uh, fake charisma, that fake friendliness. And, yeah, this is a good friend. Well, sometimes, you know, it actually did work out. It was a very real person. It wasn't a narcissist. But now, different. Uh, I want them to prove themselves. And fortunately, yeah, there are some people who actually do present themselves or... Um, not uh, the way I should say it is they prove themselves to be genuine and honest. And uh, those are good people to have in your lives. But narcissists, nah, they don't fall into that category. See those two rectangles on the screen? Let's keep on talking about this if you want. All you got to do is click on one of those two rectangles. Our conversation will continue. But if not, thanks for stopping by. And we will see you all next time.